What's going on guys? I've been getting a lot of questions on some of my brazing videos that I've posted, like what torch tips I use most commonly, uh, what pressures I run, oxyacetylene pressures, and um, just different questions like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer those as best I can. I typically use only three torch tips. I have like seven or eight torch tips, but typically I find myself using three different ones. Keep in mind, I'm a residential, small commercial uh, service technician. Also do a little bit of refrigeration as well, but mainly residential light commercial stuff. So I'm not working on anything huge um, as far as diameter of copper pipe. But typically what I use is a number zero torch tip. This one's brand new. I ended up dropping my other one and it was leaking from the seam, so I just picked up a new one. But this is a number zero. I also use a number two, and this is just a, a little bit longer um, number two tip. I like it because it can get down into tighter areas. Um, you can get them in a, a smaller, uh, smaller length as well. And also a number 15 rosebud tip, which has your standard tip, just has one orifice where the rosebud, if that will focus, there you go, has six orifices. So this one will do a lot larger piping and it will also do it a lot faster um, just because it's generating a lot more heat. So typically on the smaller stuff, we'll say like, eighth inch up to maybe half inch. I'm usually using a number zero tip. Um, again, this isn't by the book or anything. This is just what I do. I'm sure there's somebody or somewhere that's gonna say that this is wrong. It's just what I do and what works for me. So um, the smaller stuff up to about a half an inch, I typically use a number, a number zero tip um, or a number two. Number two, I'll use up to say half inch to seven eighths, somewhere in there. And um, which you can do it, you can use the number two tip on, on larger pipe, it just takes a little bit longer. And the rosebud tip, um, I pretty much use on anything from say three eighths up to an inch and three eighths. Um, again, just depends on the scenario. I'm not using one torch tip for every size copper across the board. Um, I sort of mix and match just depending on the, the particular application um, and what's surrounding the solder joint or the braze joint, things like that. So again, nothing, um, nothing set in stone, nothing by the book. It's just, uh, just what works for me. So as far as pressures, um, my oxyacetylene rig, again, I'm sure there's a right or wrong to this, um, but I've always used 7 PSI oxygen, 7 PSI acetylene. It's worked well for me. I'm sure that there's a book somewhere that tells me that I've been dead wrong my entire life. Um, but uh, that's that's what I use and uh, that's what works for me. So I do also have like some of the specialty torch tips like this uh, cap and hook. It's got three orifices. I personally can't stand this thing. I've used it like two or three times in like 20 years. Um, so I know some guys love this thing. I personally can't stand it, but again, it's personal preference. So if you're comfortable with this torch tip, uh, you work well with it, by all means, use it. Um, use what works for you. Just because it works for me doesn't necessarily mean that's uh, that's fact across the board. So, But what I'm going to do um, to end this video is I've also had questions about brazing copper joints and things like that. Um, so I'm going to show you, again, how I do it. Um, might not be by the book, but that's how I do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and light this torch up and just braze this joint right here. This is just three quarter inch copper uh, with a swage on it. Typically what I do is once I light the torch, I am going to start heating up the piece of copper that is inside of the swage, the fitting, whatever it is. I'm gonna heat up the internal piece first. So I'm gonna heat this up. Then I'm gonna heat up this outside of the swage or if it was a coupling, whatever, same thing. Um, heat that up. Once they're just about to get slightly like red, slightly cherry red, I'm going to try to drop a little piece of braise just up here at the top. And once that starts liquefying, then I'll go ahead and start putting my braise on there. I typically use the brazing rod pretty sparingly um, and just walk it around. You wanna make sure that you don't cap the 
braise joint, you want to make sure that you're getting that wick effect and you're pulling that braise back into this fitting. Um, you don't want to put like a, a cold cap or something on there that's going to fall off or rupture or crack in the future. So you want to make sure it's well bonded with the, uh, the metal. But that's typically what I'm going to do. I usually start at the top and I'll put like a puddle up here and then I will walk it around each side. And then once I've, once I've walked that around, I'll flip the torch tip over and then I will sort of walk it back and forth on the bottom and uh, get that bottom side, which typically works well for me. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the t uh, camera off. I'm going to light this torch and we will braise this up. All right, guys, and it's going to be probably hard to see on camera, so I'll kind of try to explain it to you. As far as the flame that I like to use, um, I like to use, I, I guess I'd call it a neutral flame, um, to where you have your main flame, and then you have maybe about a half inch to three quarter inch inner cone. You don't want it super, super tight, because that's going to oxidize a lot more. It's also using a lot more oxygen, so you have a likelihood of... If you get this pipe too hot, you'll blow a hole into that copper. So typically, sorry, typically I'm running something something right around there, kind of like a soft neutral flame. And uh, again, what I'm going to do is I am going to heat up this section of pipe that is inside of the fitting, or in this case, the swedge. So I'm going to heat that up. Then I'm also going to start heating up that swage. I'm not running any nitrogen, so this is going to be down and dirty. Um, not necessarily proper practices, but so once I get that just below cherry red, you can see it's not quite cherry red yet. I'll just drop a little braise on the top of there and see if it starts moving around. Once it starts rolling around the pipe where I can control it, I will go ahead and walk it around I'm trying to stay out of the camera view while doing this so hopefully it turns out okay but I'll walk around each side the left and the right making sure that I'm pulling that braise back into this joint instead of just capping it on the end and I'm always adding my braise to the top and walking it around the pipe And that's pretty much it guys. That joint is sealed. I will go ahead and uh, shut this torch off, cool this pipe down, and then we'll take a look at it and uh, see how that looks. Alright guys, went ahead and cooled the pipe off. It's still a little bit warm, but uh, we'll take a little closer look at this braised joint. You can see it filled in pretty well and again the big thing is you want to make sure that you're getting that braise back into this fitting you don't just want to cap the end of this you want to make sure that you heat the copper up enough that the metals are actually bonding to each other um, not that you're heating the braise up and sort of capping the uh, the fitting itself um, once it's actually bonded to the metal correctly it's an incredibly strong uh, joint and the likelihood of it leaking in the future is slim to none. Um, in most cases, it's actually stronger than the copper pipe itself. This joint would look a little bit cleaner if there was nitrogen flowing through it. You can see there's uh, still quite a bit of uh, oxidation. Not only does that keep the inside of the pipe clean, but I find it tends to, uh, tends to make the outside of the joint a little bit cleaner as well. But hopefully that helped, guys. If I didn't answer any of the questions or I missed something that you guys uh, were still inquiring about, definitely comment below, message me, email me, um, official HVAC and SC at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, I'll be sure to uh, try to get it answered as soon as I can. So, or if you'd like to see another video regarding specifics on brazing, um, again, I'm sure I don't do it by the book. Um, but uh, this is what's worked for, well for me over the years. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.